This summer, as usual, high school graduates are searching for dorm room bedsheets or laptops for college. Others are getting their passports in order to head off on a kind of sabbatical. A growing number of students are taking what's called a gap year after they've been accepted into college. As a self-described perfectionist at one of the best prep schools around Boston, James Clark didn't really surprise anyone when he got into a bunch of top colleges. What was surprising was when he wrote back to his first choice, saying he wasn't coming, at least for now. Clark says he desperately needed time to get out of his books, as he puts it, and into the real world. So instead of hanging his corkboard in his freshman dorm, he's off this fall to do field research in the Tibetan mountains, martial arts in Tiananmen Square, and scuba diving somewhere in South America. Clark says he can't wait to do what he wants without worrying what colleges will think, like he always had to do in high school. Gap years have long been popular in Europe. In the U.S., there's no hard national data, but colleges, consultants, and travel abroad programs all say more kids are doing it. For some kids, the gap year means time to pursue a long-time passion. For others, like Nicola Rentschler, it's about pushing yourself into new territory. Never an animal person, she signed up to rehab wild penguins in South Africa. Gap years vary in cost. Many kids work first at home to save the few thousand dollars they may need to teach English in Peru for a few months. Some parents are happy to foot the bill for that, rather than let a kid who's not ready for college waste a full year's tuition. Schools say kids come back from gap years much more mature, ready to learn, and self-sufficient than they ever were when they graduated high school. A lot of these kids are coming out with only one set of skills, and that is how to be a good student. You know, they need to sort of see that that doesn't really give you life skills. Gail Reardon, a consultant with Taking Off, helps kids plan their gap years. Reardon's business has more than tripled in the last few years as more kids take gap years and need help making it happen. Reardon likes to say gap years are about letting kids make their mistakes before their mistakes really count. But as gap year consultants and programs proliferate, consultant Stephen Roy Goodman says not all of them give kids that chance. If everything is taken care of for a student, that does defeat some of the purpose of why we're engaged in this in the first place. Others worry that gap year programs will become the exclusive province of upper middle class kids who already head to college with many advantages. Gap years tend to be more common with wealthier kids looking for the kind of grittier real world challenges that Johns Hopkins professor Stephanie DeLuca says other kids can't avoid. For, you know, the other end of the socioeconomic spectrum, <laughs> the gap year, it's not called the gap year, you know, it's just called life. <laughs> Colleges say a gap year doesn't have to be costly. Students could intern with a state representative or work in a national service program. But the concern was enough that Princeton University is planning to actually subsidize students who spend a year doing public service. It's hoping to convince 10% of freshmen to take a year off before starting college.